This week has been crazy in the tech world with Google I.O., their big annual developer conference, where they show off their latest stuff and try to prove they're still on top of the AI game. But just when Google thought they had everyone's attention, OpenAI jumped in with a major update of their own. The competition between these two is getting intense, so let's break down what they each announced, the cool new innovations, and what it all means to see who's really leading the AI world and why. So, let's start with Google I.O. Sundar Pichai and his team came out swinging with a bunch of new updates, mostly AI related because, let's be real, AI is where it's at right now. The highlight of their show was Gemini 1.5 Pro, which now has a 2 million token context window, which basically means it can handle massive amounts of data all at once, like two hours of video or going through 60,000 lines of code in one shot. To make all this data processing more efficient, they introduced context caching. This feature reuses tokens for a fraction of the cost, and this is a big deal because tokens can get pricey, so this innovation makes it way more affordable to use such a huge context window. Google also announced a new tool called Firebase GenKit, which integrates with their AI model to make building AI-enabled API endpoints easier, and they're also rolling out Project IDX, which is like a browser-based version of VS Code, and it's now open to the public. To be honest, one of the coolest things, at least for me, was the introduction of Firebase Data Connect, which now brings PostgreSQL to Firebase. This has been the number one requested feature for years, and it's finally here. For those who don't know, PostgreSQL is a powerful open source object relational database system that has earned its place in the tech community. Its integration into Firebase means a lot for app developers who need more robust data handling. But just when we thought Google would have all the attention, OpenAI came in with a big surprise. On Monday, just hours before Google's big I.O. event, OpenAI dropped a spring update and unveiled GPT-4 Omni, or GPT-4.0. This new model is faster and cheaper than GPT-4 Turbo, and it combines text, vision, and audio into one seamless system. Now, what really stood out about GPT-4 Omni is its ability to switch tones effortlessly. It can go from a California girl accent for casual chat to a dramatic or sarcastic tone, and even to a soothing bedtime story voice. I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Bite. But I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. Got it. Let's add some drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours. And here's something interesting. OpenAI announced they're in talks to bring GPT-4 Omni to the iPhone. This could be huge because Google is also trying to get their AI, specifically Gemini, onto Apple's devices. So the race to dominate mobile AI is officially on, and it looks like OpenAI might have the upper hand here. So let's talk about how these AI models actually perform in real-world scenarios. OpenAI's GPT-4 Omni is setting new standards. An AI that not only understands your words, but also the context, tone, and visual elements around you isn't just a fancy feature, it's actually revolutionary. Think about virtual assistants, customer service bots, or even personal companions that can truly understand and interact like a human. OpenAI's model is leading the way in making these scenarios a reality. Now Google's Gemini 1.5 Pro, while impressive with its large context window, still feels a bit robotic compared to OpenAI's offerings. Google is integrating its AI into practical tools that many of us use daily, from enhancing email summarization in workspace labs to adding AI overviews in Google search. These are undoubtedly useful features, but they don't quite have the same wow factor as OpenAI's multimodal capabilities. Innovation is where the battle really heats up. OpenAI's GPT-4 Omni isn't just text-based anymore. It understands images, video, and sounds, making it a true multimodal AI. Google, meanwhile, introduced Project Astra, which feels similar to GPT-4 Omni. For example, on the official demo, they asked Astra where their glasses are. Do you remember where you saw my glasses? And it actually gave them an answer. Yes, I do. Your glasses were on the desk near a red apple. It's cool, but the latency and less natural voice response compared to OpenAI's model show that Google is still playing catch up. Another significant innovation from Google is their VO model, a generative video model aimed at competing with OpenAI's Sora. Google's VO can generate high quality 1080p videos. While the initial demos looked promising, some examples were a bit blurry and didn't quite match the crispness of OpenAI's offerings. It's a step forward, but again, it feels like OpenAI is setting the pace. Now let's talk about leadership and strategy. First up, let's address the elephant in the room. 
OpenAI just parted ways with Ilya Sutskever, their chief scientist and one of the co-founders. Now, Ilya was like the brains behind a lot of OpenAI's biggest breakthroughs, so his departure is a pretty big deal, you know? The reasons behind it are still a bit of a mystery, but it just goes to show how crazy and unpredictable this AI industry can be. OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman, gave Ilya mad props for his contributions and assured everyone that their mission would keep trucking along under new leadership. On the other hand, Google has been steady with their leadership, but they've been going ham trying to innovate and catch up to the competition. They recently announced some new hardware like these things called Trillium TPUs and Axion CPUs for their data centers. Basically, they're doubling down on building the infrastructure needed to support their AI ambitions. This hardware is crucial for scaling up their AI models and making them accessible to more users. Now, public perception is a huge part of this battle. According to recent polls, about 90% of people found OpenAI's updates way more exciting than Google's announcements at their big I.O. event. It's not just about flashy presentations, it's about delivering tech that feels genuinely groundbreaking. You know what I mean? OpenAI's ability to generate that hype and capture people's imagination gives them a massive edge. Google's announcements are solid, but they, they often give the impression that they're trailing behind. The new features are useful, sure, but they don't have that same immediate wow factor. Google's strength lies in their integration into a broad ecosystem of products, but sometimes it feels like they're trying to do too much at once without any single feature standing out as revolutionary. Looking ahead, the path to AGI and beyond is filled with challenges. OpenAI's strategy involves using each generation of AI systems to improve the next, creating a self-improving loop. This iterative approach could potentially accelerate the development of AGI, where an AI can perform any intellectual task that a human can. Google, on the other hand, is more focused on integrating AI into practical applications, making it an indispensable part of our everyday lives. They're working on AI agents that can act as virtual teammates, enhancing productivity tools and improving user experiences. This practical approach ensures that AI is embedded in our daily routines, making it more accessible and useful for the average Joe. But both companies recognize the need for safety and alignment when developing these advanced AI systems. OpenAI, for instance, has been vocal about their efforts to ensure that AGI is developed safely and benefits all of humanity. They've committed a significant portion of their compute resources to safety research, acknowledging the potential risks associated with powerful AI. So who's got the edge? Right now, it seems like OpenAI is leading the pack. Their ability to innovate rapidly, combined with strategic releases that capture public interest, keeps them at the forefront of the AI race. Their GPT-4 Omni's integration of text, vision, and audio is a significant leap forward, positioning OpenAI as the leader in multimodal AI. But when you really think about it, as these two giants continue to push the boundaries of what AI can do, the real winners are us, the users, and the broader AI community. The competition drives innovation, leading to more advanced, useful, and exciting AI technologies. All right, that's a wrap for today's deep dive into the AI world. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss an update. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Who do you think is winning the AI race, OpenAI or Google? Let's get the discussion going. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.